Hi, this is Bird from Bird's SVGs, and in this video we'll be putting together the uh, gingerbread house. Well, it's a clock and a luminary, um, so you've got two for one in today's project. So it looks great during the day, and it's really handy as a clock, but at night it becomes something completely different, and it's a really great um, light-up luminary. Okay, so the first step we're going to do is we're going to be putting our vellum um, inside our... our um, our house um, pieces. I'm using double-sided sticky tape on my um, vellum pieces today. You can use glue, there's, there's no problem with that, but if I'm a little bit um, heavy-handed with my glue, then sometimes I get um, my vellum to wrinkle. So to avoid that, I'm using some narrow double-sided um, sticky tape. And when you use the narrow stuff in particular, it's really easy for going around um, curves. I'll show you again on the little circle um, window vellum. But what I do is as I'm going around, I kind of pleat the tape. So that kind of gives me um, an advantage. One is I can just use one piece of tape look to go all the way around this circle. And another thing is um, that it kind of helps me position it because it's because it's not flat. It's raised. It's kind of holding it off the um, card a little bit. So it gives me a little bit of time before I add the pressure to kind of smooth it all out. Okay, so once you've added all your vellum layers, they'll look like this. And then the next thing to do is to go ahead and add our outside layers um, to all of the walls of our house. We're having two layers on our house um, today because, well, for two reasons, really. One is that because we've got a clock on the front, a clock mechanism, and in particular the battery as well, um, adds a bit of weight to our structure. So we want it to be nice and strong. And the other thing is we want our walls to kind of be doubled so the light can only escape through the windows and it looks much more effective that way. So we're going to be adding an outside layer now to all of these pieces. So one by one, I'm just going to be placing them. I mean, you literally can't get it wrong. They're just doubles of um, where they go. But to line them up, to actually put them into place, if you use the windows as your guide and you make sure that the, um, the cross members in your window are lined up, then the outside edge will be exactly where it should be. So here are your little side pieces. Now these look a little bit different because they've got cutouts in them. Now this is to make the placement of your icing really, really simple. It's just like a jigsaw puzzle. So you, in a minute we'll be putting our icing into place and they literally just slot into these holes. Okay, so when I'm adding the glue to my, um, my outside layers, I'm making sure that I go around the outside perimeter and then I make sure that I'm putting some through the middle struts of the windows and around the icing areas as well, just in case they try and lift off. Um, this is where a precision tip comes in handy, uh, which is it's probably um, advisable that I say a little bit about the glue I'm using because I, I still get an awful lot of um, questions about it. The one I'm using is, um, it's, I think it's called Dries Clear, but the company is Art Glitter. And you can get the bottles in a bigger size, but I find this size particularly handy. I like the glue. It's really great. It's kind of tacky. It comes out very fine and it's tacky and it dries really quickly um, when you're constructing. But the other thing that's great is um, the precision tip. You very often have to buy it separately. But these bottles are great because if there is another glue that you also like, um, you can top your bottle up. So don't ever throw these bottles away, especially if you've got the precision tips. Just top them up with another glue. There are some others that I that I think are great as well, like Scotch. Um, I sometimes use, I think it's called Kalau glue. Um, there's a couple of different ones that I use. But these, this is the bottle and the precision tip that, are, that I particularly recommend. It comes with a pin that's stainless steel, so it doesn't uh, rust. I've had ones in the past where the pins actually rust and turn all your, um, your glue yellow, so that's great. <laughs> um, so yeah, there's none of that. The nozzle never, um, never really blocks, 
so yeah I really recommend it I tried so many until I settled for this one so um, yeah I'm happy to recommend this okay just lining up my front and making sure that I line up with the hole where the clock will go and my little window tool I'm using um, I find this really handy for um, removing little bits of glue that are that are peeking out I think it's called an orange stick and you use it for um, when you do your nails and I kind of buy them in bulk um, so yeah I find they're great because glue um, sometimes is resistant to like plastic and metal and stuff but uh, those little um, wooden sticks are absolutely great okay so I'm putting my last few pieces into place um, which it's kind of like my double wall on my house. And then next, while they're flat, before we start constructing anything, we want to add our decorative um, elements. So the first pieces I've got, these go on the outside edge of the front and back of my house. And these are kind of like little candy cane stripes. Um, instead of going for the traditional red today, I've decided to go for pink glitter because I can. <laughs> this is the fun thing about paper crafts. You can do it any colour you want. There really are no rules. So it just comes in two strips, your colour piece and your white piece. And then they pop into place either side of your front and back. And you can't get the placement wrong because the slant to the top just follows the line of the roof Okay, now I'm going to start putting my other details on. So we've got the the window trims. They just go over the top of the window areas and you just want to line up the little window panes. And then you've also got your little icing pieces and these are hearts and swirls. And it's just like a jigsaw. So the swirls actually come in a couple of different sizes, but they can only fit in the hole they're meant to be in. So you can't go wrong with this. I've tried to make it, you know, as easy, um, easy to do as I can. Okay, now I'm going to be adding, starting to add the icing pieces to my roof. So to make the placement easier, I'm folding along my score lines. So then I can kind of see where the outside edge of my roof is um, easier. Sometimes, it, it, you know, it's not as easy to see the little um, score line, or the little dash line. Um, but make it easier for yourself. Just, just fold along them and then it's easier to kind of line up against it. So these can only go on one way because obviously um, you want to follow the outside line of the, um, the little opening there. This is where the little dormer window will go. Now again, because I've got a precision tip, I can follow all of the lines here. But if you don't, just add some dots. Just add some little dots of glue, just kind of all over, all over the area. And that'll be fine. I mean, it's, it's ever so fine. It's got no weight to it at all. So... Just a few dots will, will hold it in place. And then if any of it does try and lift, just use the spatula trick. So add a little bit of glue to your spatula and then just slide it underneath. You know, the spatula you use for taking your pieces off your, um, your electronic cutting mat. 
because that's the that's the, the um, finest thing that I've got in my craft room. Um, slide a little bit of glue to that and slide it under the piece and then it'll just add some glue where you need it and you can just um, put some pressure on and, and stick it down. The reason I say that is if, if you sometimes just getting your fingernail under something is enough to bend the card. So Right, now you will find that these icing pieces that go on your little dormer roofs, these will only go one way round. Um, so you can't really get it wrong. So the little kind of crisscross piece meets in the middle. Right, now I'm moving on to my clock face. I've chosen to have a white face today and I wanted a pink background. So it kind of mimics my um, little candy cane stripes a little bit. So the only thing you need to line up here is the little hole in the middle. Because that's where the spindle of our clock will go. So I'm making sure that's well stuck down because it's actually a glitter layer and that can be a little bit... A little bit um, difficult to glue so I was just um, making sure that that's thoroughly stuck down now obviously popping your clock into place you want to make sure that you've got 12 at the top and six at the bottom and that you've got it nice and kind of um, you know straight up and down so I'm using the window at the top and the gap in the icing at the bottom to try and get my placement and make sure that it's nice and square Right, before we put all the, all the walls of our house together, we're going to be popping our dormer windows in, into place first. Now, um, your one will be ever so slightly different to this. So you've got the little tabs um, at the little triangle roof area there, but you will also have a tab along the top edge. Can you see that mine isn't actually joined along that along the top, but yours will have an extra little tab to close that off I mean I, I didn't find it to be a problem with the construction but I thought well if I can add one why not so yours won't actually gape there because it will be covered over so no one will see it but I thought um, I'd add it to your copy so that has actually been altered since the filming of this assembly so yours is yours is um would be sealed at the top too so you're just going to slide your kind of um this is what i'm calling the side of the house you can slide that over your dormer window it will be a snug fit it's meant to be um, but it will fit and then you just smooth it into place against against your desk against the flat of your desk so again you want to add some glue to the little tabs that are at the kind of roof the top roof um area of your little dormer window here Yours will be slightly different because it'll have another tab along the long edge to close up the top. And then the edges around the perimeter, they all bend forwards. So you can add glue and then slide the other side of the house down over your window. There you go, just slide it over. And then once it's into place, you just smooth it down, push against your desk. And that's in place. Okay, now we can actually put the, um, put a house together. So we're going to be adding glue to the um, one tab at a time. Then obviously you want to put your, well this is actually the back, then the side, then the front, then the side. So you want to alternate the front and back with the sides to make sure everything's where it should be. And Lily's come to help. <laughs> There's no show without punch.
Okay, so just put in my front on now. Anything you can do with the with the um, construction flat and you can push it against your desk makes things so much easier. Okay, so now we can bend over the kind of roof um, pieces of the sides of our house. So we'll just add some glue um, to the tabs on the front and back of our house. <laughs> Lily's determined to help today. So one by one, I'm adding glue to the tabs. And the, our house is really starting to take shape. So now we're going to be attaching our roof layers. Now um, you'll need to look out for the roof uh, panel that's got the added tab along the long edge. So along the uh, middle, you know, the kind of, um, what do you call it? Where a roof meets at the top. I forget what you call it now. But yours, on one of them, they will have a long tab along um, the, along down the middle of the roof. <laughs> I can't remember what it's called. Okay, that's the roof panel that you want to add first because that will actually close up the top of your uh, roof. So that's something that I that I added um, after I filmed this video. But you'll see one of the roof panels has got a long tab that will close up the top of the roof the roof there, and the other one doesn't. So you want to add that tab first, that um pa that uh, panel that's got that tab on first. Um, add some glue to the tab and close up the top of the house. And then that'll make the rest of the construction a little bit easier for you. I mean, I did actually manage absolutely fine, but I thought, well, I can add that, so why not? Sorry, some of this is off. Um, it's off camera. I didn't um, actually realise that at the time. But basically all I'm doing is I'm sliding my roof panel on and sliding it over where the dormer window sticks out. Okay, so the the front and back of the roof panels, the, the kind of decorative overhang there, they overlap ever so slightly. So I'm just adding a little drop of glue underneath and you want the piece that has got the seam that comes down centre. You want that to be the one that's um, over the top. Although, it doesn't really matter because we're going to be covering that over in a moment. And we're doing the same with these little dormer um, roofs. So we're, we're adding some glue to the middle bit where the decorative layer, the decorative overhang there, um, where that overlaps. And we're putting them together so the so the seam is pointing straight down it's at a 90 degree angle and then we know it's at the right angle to fit on top of our little dormer windows right so we've got some extra decorative pieces here we're going to be adding some to the dormer roofs here and then we're going to be adding some to the main house so what we've got is we've got these little um pieces of icing and I'm folding down the centre edge. I mean, they are scored, but they, they are ever so tiny. Um, so I'm just trying to be a little bit careful the way I stick it together. Now, I'm just putting glue to half of it. So just one side of the score line there. 
and I'm gluing these two pieces together because when I pop it on the top of my roof on or on top of the, my little dormer roof here I want it to actually stand proud now I'm just adding glue popping it on and then I've got a little piece to go on the front And I've also got two little pieces that go on the sides. Now your little roof bits are actually slightly longer than your dormer window. So it will overhang a little bit and, and that's the way it's meant to be. Okay, so now I'm putting my little sides on because I obviously forgot those for a moment. Sorry, I'm slightly off camera there. Just popping one on each side. And this is kind of the same piece, but it's on a slightly larger scale. And that goes on to the house itself. Now, what you want to do when you put those on um, is you want to make sure that the scallop at the bottom is lined up because the top edge actually stands proud a little bit. And that's the way that it's meant to be. So you want to line up the scallop at the bottom now I'm actually going to be covering my holes there with um, with some gems. So I wasn't too worried about any of the glue showing. Although it does dry clear, obviously I don't want it to be to be seen. Okay, so I'm doing the same to the other little dormer roof. I'm adding all of my icing pieces. By the end of this project, it's going to look like someone went really crazy with an icing bag. <laughs> There's quite a lot of little um, decorative uh, icing areas. And again, when I put these into place, you're going to make sure that the bottom scalloped edge is lined up. The top edge is supposed to stand slightly proud. It's that effect when someone kind of pipes along the edges of, of their gingerbread house and it's kind of, um, it's slightly raised and it's, you know, um, that's the look I was going for. So you just want to line up the bottom edges of all of these pieces. Okay, so now we've got a longer version of what we put on the roof of our dormer, um, our little dormer windows. So you're folding them along the score line. You add glue to one half and then stick them together. Now I'm using my piece to actually close up my roof, but you will have closed your roof up when you put your, um, your roof panels on. So yours will be a lot easier. I mean, it, it did actually close up the top of my roof absolutely fine, um, but yours will be already joined, so don't worry about that. Just pop in one hand on the inside to kind of um, put some pressure from the inside and the outside to just make sure that it's, it's taken hold. And then I'm going to add my clock mechanism. Now my clock hands were actually black and I didn't want them black because it didn't match my project. Um, so I actually covered them in um, um, 
pigment ink and put embossing powder on them. So the hands I did um, in silver glitter and then the second hand I just did in plain silver so it was a little bit of a contrast. Okay, so when you put your, your clock mechanism in, it will have instructions with it, so you can just follow the instructions. But the washers go on the inside of the spindle, and then the little nut piece, is that, yeah, I think that's called a nut, isn't it? That goes on the outside, just to hold it in, in place. And then that's all you need. So your hands just pop on in order, and then I put my second hand on, and then I'm ready to put my battery in okay so my house is going to be sitting on a plinth and that means that you have a nice big area inside for putting any electronic light of your choice please don't use a naked flame not with paper um, but if you've got the little kind of um, like kind of short disc um, LEDs whether you've got a big pillar candle um, whether you've got a string of lights that you just want to bundle up and pop inside no matter what it is it will fit inside this house there's a nice big area inside the plinth okay so I've got all my side pieces of my plinth and I folded along the score lines and that's particularly important with white because it's, it's quite difficult to see the score lines so I folded along all of the score lines to get the, to know where the edges are so I don't know I want to get the placement just right and then I've decided to use pattern paper on my plinth today to kind of go with the whole pink colour theme. This is actually some paper that I um, had in my stash from last year that I was really wanted to use, but um, didn't use it last year. I think it's from my mind's eye. I think it's called something like Comfort and Joy. But if you don't have that um, or can't find it, there's a lovely um, collection out this year by... Forgotten what it's called. Here it is. There's a, a great collection out today called um, out this year called Carousel Christmas by Bow Bunny, and that's all um, pastel pinks and blues and greens, um, and that would be a great choice if you were doing the same colour scheme as I am. Uh, with my clock but obviously you know if you're going to use pattern paper for your plinth um, go with whatever you've got in your stash that matches the colour scheme that you're going for I mean I went for a pink colour scheme but if you're going for like a traditional red kind of candy cane kind of um, look then if you've got any fun kind of red papers in your stash then they'd be perfect Okay, so I'm going ahead and I'm, I've added the pa uh, pattern paper layers to the pieces um, to my sides and to my platform. Now I'm constructing these little boxes. Now they're down as your in your download as supports. These are these can be um, well technically you can cut these in any color you want because they're going to be inside your plinth, so no one's going to see them. But I've cut mine in white because obviously my plinth is white and I don't want um, anything showing through. So if you do colour coordinate it, it's, it's wise. But if you're using a different colour, it doesn't matter what, what they are. It can be any old scrap card stock from your um, stash. So just making these little boxes. And I'm trying to make sure that I put them together accurately because they've got to be a certain height. Okay, so now we've put all our um, kind of pieces together. We can start with the construction of our plinth. So this is the top and I'm going to fold along all of the score lines. And then I just need to glue my little corners into place. So one by one, I'm adding glue to the tab.
Okay, so now I'm going to put my sides together. So you want to alternate them, the one long side, one short side, one long side, one short side. So I'm trying to make sure that I glue all of these pieces together nice and straight so we've got some good 90 degree angles. So I'm gluing them just on the score line, not either side of it, but right on it. Okay, so I'm just going to put that to the side just one moment and let the glue harden. And then I'm going to get the top that I put together and then I'm just going to slide my platform piece down over the top. And again, it is a snug fit, but it's meant to be like that. So I folded my little tabs outwards and then I'm putting glue on them. sliding my platform piece down over my top and then I can push against my desk and make sure that it's got a good hold. Now one of the sides doesn't seem to be gluing down and then I realised because I haven't put any glue on it <laughs> so I just popped that on at the end. Okay, so that's our top and it's ready to go onto our sides. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add glue to one of the sides first of all. And then I'm going to make sure that that's glued onto my, my top piece, my platform piece, nice and squarely. Is squarely a word? I don't think it is. Okay, so I'm kind of using that like a hinge. And then I'm going to add glue to the other three sides. And then when I kind of pop that back down, it's it will be in place. And it's easy to work with as well because it's kind of already fixed on one side. Okay, so I've kind of got a couple of fingers underneath the platform and then I'm pushing against it with the hand with the finger inside, trying to make sure that it's um it it's all seated and the glue's taken. And now we're going to be adding our little supports in because there's quite a bit of weight in the clock that I mentioned earlier on. What I've done is I've got these little support boxes and these are going to go into the corners of the base of the plinth because a lot of the weight kind of pushes down on the corners. So what I'm doing is I'm adding some glue in inside where it goes, but I've added some glue also to the two sides of the little box. And then I'm holding it in place and making sure that it's, you know, that it's um, taken hold and it's um, nice and sturdy. And then I'm just adding a little bit of glue where those um, tabs overlap over the top of these little support boxes. So before I put my base on, I want to make sure that everything's all glued to each other. Because I want this to be nice and sturdy. Because not only have we got the weight of the um, double walled house, we've got the weight of the clock inside and the battery. And then also whatever light um, that you plan to put inside, because you may put pillar candles in there or anything. Electronic ones, of course. Um, yeah, so I'm just taking an extra moment just to glue those down. It just, it adds a lot more um, 
strength and sturdiness to the finished piece. Okay, so now I'm adding glue to the tabs, but I'm also adding some glue as well to my little support boxes before I pop my base on. So I'm just going to smooth that into place and that's my plinth done. Now I did actually, you'll see in the final picture, I popped a couple of little trees on my plinth. Those are actually from, I believe it was crepe paper and they come in a little packet. You get two pink, two green and two cream. Well, I hope you enjoy uh, creating and using your gingerbread house clock and luminary.